Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast, episode 6, in which we're going to cover chapter 8 of the book, The Crossing. Now this will be a slightly shorter episode this time, um, I possibly pushed my luck last time with three chapters at one go. Um, we'll see how that goes, if, if it's one person talking, maybe shorter episodes are the, are the best way to go with that one. Um, there's also a possibility of an episode in the near future in which I'll, I'll discuss the two most re- recent audio books of Warship Down with another fan of the book who's, uh, who's been in touch. Um, we're, we're looking into that one at the moment. We'll be comparing uh, Ralph Cosham's interpretation with the mo- more recent one of uh, Peter Capaldi. I'm just going to uh, try and get hold of the other version. I've read Peter, listen to Peter Capaldi's version. And we're just going to... With having, we're planning to have a discussion in which we compare the two, the two interpretations, because audiobooks you know, they aren't inj- objective interpretations of a book. Um, you know, they they make their own decisions about how they're going to put across characters, and that could be quite an interesting conversation. Anyway, one for the future. So on to chapter eight. <clears throat> now this chapter opens with the first biblical quotation in the book. For it's from the Acts of the Apostles, and and the quotation, which I won't read out here, it it, it basically gives the game away as to what's going to happen in the chapter. It's about you know the way they escape across the water. Um, it's the first chapter in which all three of this group of rabbits' advantages come into play. Now, first of all, there's the most basic advantage that they they have of of physical strength, which any group of rabbits would have, I guess, and that, that's characterised by bigwig, the sheer need to have physical strength and be able to use force where necessary. The next strength that we've already seen, that is the what started this venture off in the first place, are the psychic abilities, apparently, of Fiverr. Um, again, these psychic abilities just seem to just exist in the book, and that, that's the world in which we're in, and you know, we accept that. But now a third... A third characteristic comes into play, which hasn't yet, and it's a key feature of the book. And, you know, apart from Fiverr's warnings, you could argue this is also one of the, in a way, the most important characteristic in the book. Um, Which is the use of rationalism and the ability to innovate. Now, these are human characteristics. You know, that here we begin in this chapter, we see a rabbit behaviour that has never been observed by people, as far as I'm aware, in nature. Um, the rabbit's behaving in a way that is very human. You know, but quite apart from the fact we're in a book where rabbits talk, which is a human characteristic, we're now in a, in this chapter, we enter a world in which rabbits innovate. And in a way, you could say use science. Again, you have to suspend disbelief. It makes for a good story. Now, Hazel, as leader, is properly tested for the first time in this chapter. He has to reconcile the input of all three of these, of strength, of mysticism, psychic abilities, and of, and of rationalism. He has to reconcile all three, the demands of all three, to come to a decision. And Blackberry, as the, as the rationalist, is also the most clear that that is Hazel's job, not his. Blackberry is a very mature character in that sense. <clears throat> now, the scene is... Described at first using Adam's usual brilliant language. And it makes it clear from the details that rabbits are only are also noticing some of these details. They're taking some of them in. As it describes the, the stream that they've come to, as the, as the light is improving, they can see where they are. Nature is described beautifully, as usual. The rabbits move upstream to feed. And Hazel asks Fiverr why they need to cross the river. It's a reasonable question. Why can't they just move along it? Now, Fiverr's explanation might be a mixture, it seems to be a mixture of actual knowledge of landscape and the way it works, but also there's a sense of a more mystical sense of landscape, because after all, Fiverr's Fiverr's only lived all his life so far in in one warren, in a very small place. We're in now, he hasn't moved very far. So how does he know so much about landscape? So it's also as if there's a, a mystical sense of knowledge of landscape here. He explains very calmly that, Basically, they need to cross the river so that the ground will start to rise again and so they can find the kind of place they need to settle, which he's saying is ideally a high, lonely place with dry soil where people hardly ever come, where they can smell the world all around them and see the world all around them. You have to ask, how would he know this? How would he know this? And this is where you think that maybe these mystical senses come in. However... They can't cross yet because Fiverr and Pipkin, who's injured, are too tired to swim yet and they've got to rest. And Bigwig, 
comes along with the strong approach and asks if they're ready to move on. Hazel has to firmly say, no, they're not. They have to rest. Blackberry, very intelligently, again, diffuses this tension by suggesting Bigwig swim the river to scout out the other side. Now, as soon as Bigwig is gone, and they see him run across the field on the other side, he, he's back straight away. He plunges into the river in a panic with news that there's a dog loose in the wood, trailing its chain. This dog has clearly escaped. There's no person with it. It's not under control. Now, this is absolute blind panic, of course. And the three approaches come out here very clearly. Bigwig's approach is to say that those who can swim the river must swim now. They've got to go. The others who can't will have to make out the best they can. There's nothing they can do for them. They hear the dog yelping nearby. There's a sense of panic now. Now, Hazel, despite this, rejects Bigwig's approach and says he's going to stay with the others who can't swim. Bigwig loses his temper at this. I mean, what's the point? It's like he's throwing his life away. Bigwig, in, in terms of the knowledge he has of the world, he's being very practical here. But now, Hazel notices that Bigwig isn't being scared. He's not scared of, uh, for himself. He's just interpreting the world as best, as best he can in the circumstances they're in. He can't see another way. Now, this is where Blackberry's innovation comes in, because Hazel is getting very conflicted here. It, it makes it clear that Hazel is finding it very difficult to make a decision here about what to do, apart from the brave decision of staying with the rabbits who can't swim. Blackberry, meanwhile, by the bank, has found a piece of wood, and he understands it can be used to float Fiverr and Pipkin across to the other side. To most of the rabbits, this makes no sense at all. They have no sense of how something floats, of what this means. He's very intelligent for a rabbit, extremely intelligent. But none of them understand what he's going on about, except Fiverr. Fiverr instantly understands. He doesn't come up with the idea, but once he's presented with the idea, he gets it. Is this intelligence? Is this secondary intelligence? Is this his sense of mysticism, this psychic ability? That he could actually visualise what this would mean? Because after all, what Blackberry is displaying is intelligence. Now, intelligence, this human characteristic of intelligence, is the ability to innovate. The ability to imagine the world as it could be. Not just to be able to see what's in front of you, but to think, if I do this, that could be a result. As soon as Fiverr is presented with that, with that possibility, he can visualise the way this will work. So maybe it's not mystical, maybe it's just... The ability to look ahead, to visualise, to understand the way the world works around you. Whereas Blackberry can come up with initial ideas himself. As soon as Fiverr gets it, the plan comes into play. Hazel says to Bigwig and Silver, once Pipkin's been pushed onto the piece of wood, he says to Bigwig and Silver to push the piece of wood out, push it out into the river, and when as it floats out with these two small rabbits on it and turns around. Most of them can't make out what the hell they're seeing. They do not understand what they're seeing. But Blackberry, at this point, very intelligently again, says to Hazel, makes it clear he's got to take the lead. But once now they're out in the river, Hazel needs to tell them what to do. Now Hazel does, and as a result, they all start to swim across the river. And they get across pretty pretty, pretty easily. For most of them, this is a fairly easy swim. There are stronger swimmers, such as Silver and Bigwig, but pushing the little raft is not easy. He goes under once, but he, he, he sees he needs to push. Once it's been, it's been presented to him, this is what you need to do. Big Wig is very clear, and he gets them across, him and Silver possibly helping as well, get them across the river. Suffice to say, they all reach the other side safely, and they make for a hedgerow on the other side. They don't hesitate on the bank, they make for a hedgerow. And Fiverr makes it clear to Blackberry that he knows that his idea has saved him and Pipkin. Blackberry comments that, yes, that this was a good idea and they should bear it in mind for the future. He doesn't seem boastful at all. It's just objective. It was a good idea. It's clearly worked. And, of course, his idea to bear this in mind for the future will prove crucial later in the book. A bit of foreshadowing there. So in the next episode, the rabbits make their way across new open countryside. What will they find? <laughs>